I never thought that I would die. I never actually thought about being injured. I thought, tomorrow, we are going to be the headlines of the newspaper. I was convinced at age 14 that I wanted to become a commercial airline pilot. I don't know, there was something about power and control and adventure, travel. And once I took my first flight as a pilot, I, I was hooked. When I looked down and saw the world from the air, I had this feeling of freedom. And I thought, gosh, I can take this airplane someday and fly anywhere I want to go. I felt like I belonged in the air. This is where I'm going to spend my entire vocational life. And I did. As a flight instructor, airline pilot instructor, standards captain, aviation safety counselor, FAA designated examiner in jet aircraft. I would give check rides and airline transport pilot certificate exams. I just enjoyed it. I just loved it. At age 19, got a volunteer part-time job as a co-pilot and was able to fly with this guy named Chuck. It was uh, July 18th, 1969. I got on the freeway and drove to the Hollywood Burbank Airport. It was a perfectly clear morning. I got to the Piper Navajo, a twin engine, 10 seat aircraft, and was looking forward to just another typical, beautiful day of flying. Chuck and Gene, the relative of the chief pilot, got to the airplane and Chuck said, okay, Dale, now Gene is gonna be flying left seat today. That's the first time that had happened. And then I would be riding in the right seat as co-pilot. We did another engine run up. There was nothing wrong with the airplane. We started up, started taxiing out. Chuck noticed that there was uh, something not exactly right. Chuck tapped me on the shoulder, I shall never forget it. And he motioned for me to uh, uh, change positions with him. So I got out of the co-pilot seat, he got in, I strapped myself down into the temporary third seat. Gene in the left seat is flying, but Chuck in the right seat is in control. We were then cleared for takeoff, everything's normal, the airplane begins to bounce, that's normal, and we actually rotate and lift off the ground and start to climb. We were about 100 feet above the runway, and yet we weren't climbing. So the, the nose of the aircraft is pitched up, but we're not going up. And the engines are straining at full power. And then for some strange reason, I began to hear this unfamiliar uh, whine of the engines that they were out of sync. Well, with that huge, uh, loud sound of the engines being in disharmony, now my worst fears uh, became realized when Chuck, the guy in command in the right seat, points with his left hand and said, let's land in that clear area over there. The thought came to my mind that we were going to crash. Then I noticed, and I shall never forget this either, Chuck reached up and grabbed the flight controls and he squeezed them with both hands, moved them all the way left, pulled them all the way against his chest, all in one motion in about a half of a second of time. We clipped the tops of some tall trees. It turned the airplane to the left and that forced our direction to slam into this very solid uh, concrete and tile dome. It's called the Portal of the Folded Wings. It's ironically erected in memory of deceased pilots. It's seven stories tall, and we impacted it five feet from the top. The official impact speed was recorded by the NTSB at 135 miles per hour. It was considered non-survivable. The airplane just broke into literally a couple thousand pieces, and then three pilots fell to 70 feet to the ground. And the next thing that happened is I'm looking down at the three bodies and I'm wondering why I'm here, why I'm seeing this. And I'm looking down at this airplane crash and not knowing that I was in an airplane crash. I'm looking down at three bodies and 
I look at the first person who's dead. I look at the second person, it's Chuck, but I don't recognize that it's Chuck. I, I look at the third person and it's me, and I do recognize, oh my gosh, that's me. I didn't feel worried, I didn't feel panicky, I didn't feel any pain, of course, uh, but I felt very alive and very alert, and for a while, confused. Why is that my body and why am I up here? Why am I seeing that? I thought, gosh, I had died so young. I follow my body to the hospital. I'm above my body in the emergency room. I start moving out of the hospital past Burbank. It didn't take long and I start realizing I'm being accompanied by two angelic beings behind me. There was a light that was far ahead. Now this light was so bright that it would be brighter than the sun. The source of it is God. It's coming from God and everybody knows it. I knew that I was in eternity. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no death in heaven. There's only light and life and love. And uh, talk about heaven. Just get me talking about the love of heaven. <laughs> and. See, I believe that God created men and women in His own image, that we are a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body, and we were created to want to love and be loved. But I believe that if we were really honest with ourselves, that we would find that we were also created to give love as well as to receive it. And the interesting thing is, is as you give anything, whatever you give, you get right back. <laughs> it's just a, the, one of the principles of God. If you give something, you get that something back. I knew that I belonged. And then all of a sudden, I was brought back to life. There I am, my back is broken in multiple places. There was debris that had been pulled out of my body. I was a disaster. <laughs> You know, I have a, a scientific mind. I'm trained as an engineer. My background uh, with my parents and grandparents, we all had a logical background, so things had to be quantified, and, and uh, they had to be solid and, and provable. Uh, and none of this is that way, yet uh, my whole life is different. My whole life has been changed because of this experience. I recognize that life is really short and it's unpredictable. The most important thing that I've ever come to determine is where will we go when we die? And Jesus said, if you believe in me, you shall have eternal life. Do your own due diligence. Get a good Bible and read everything that Jesus said. That's all. Just read what he said and keep your mind very alert, but open your heart, and then make your own decision. It's, it's your life, it's your eternal life, so do with it whatever you wanna do. But uh, don't just believe someone else because they said something. Don't believe some preacher because he's preached, and certainly don't believe me, but do believe what you read from the Word of God.